Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Work with Chuck Shelby, Risk Management Commodities. We've seen some mixed trade in both grain and livestock futures here this morning and as we move through the mid-session. So it being still under a little pressure here, Chuck. And, you know, how much of that is just some profit taking uh, because we've had a pretty good run up the first couple of days of this week. Yeah, it was a good week for soybeans. Uh, we made a, an effort to get back into the $14 level, and I, I think we saw some producers selling. Also, the weather, uh, some rain in, in South America. Uh, the pattern next week will be interesting to see if it goes back to the hot and dry. So uh, just a, kind of a backwards day in beans and uh, holiday mode set in here, I think, after we got past the lunch hour today. Yeah. So it doesn't look like, you know, the weather is going to turn extremely wet here as we move into the month of December. And so, you know, if these rains that were forecasted this week are not as good as advertised and we look forward and the forecast looks pretty dry, will this market finally be able to move past these resistance areas, do you think? I think so. As we progress, uh, you know, later into the growing season down there and Eventually, you know, you have to have the, the moisture produce a good crop. South America is not like uh, some of the better soils in the United States. So you have to have uh, timely rains and keep those consistent. So as we move past the holiday here, I think there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, traders uh, typically want to pull away from the market. But I think next week, if the pattern persists, I think the market will make another move towards 14 and, and maybe have the opportunity to push past there. Yeah. And demand has been getting better here, at least on the export front, hasn't it? Yeah, that's the bright side for soybeans. Uh, we continually see buyers come to the market. Uh, China's been active. So, you know, we have a tight supply in the United States. It's uh, still a good tight crop here. Uh, concerns over South America and world buyers are willing to come here. So you, combination in the bean market, you've got a lot of fundamental positives. And as we go forward, that weather will be critical to see what direction the bean market wants to take. Yeah. So the corn market up just slightly here. It's been a reluctant follower of just about everything. But this morning, we also got a little bit of export business. So is that kind of propping up the market at least uh, temporarily? Yeah, I think that that was uh, good to see buyers. We occasionally see uh, world buyers step in and buy some corn. Unlike soybeans, though, we've got a lot more corn left over. So the market's somewhat hesitant to get very far up. When you look at another factor that's going on, there's a lot of producers, especially in the Eastern Corn Belt that have December basis contracts. Uh, they're gonna have to make a decision here coming pretty quickly as to whether they wanna roll that or cash in the corn. So uh, I think that's a little bit of a negative in December corn going on in the Eastern Corn Belt right now. So once we get past some of that forced edge pressure, do you think that the corn market is gonna be able to have or stage a bit of a rally going into the end of the year? Because here again, like we just talked, uh, the demand is picking up a bit. Yeah, you got a couple factors that could help uh, corn as we move forward. The hedge pressure might be off. Harvest will be pretty much concluded. Um, we also know the funds are big time shorts in corn. Uh, so they may want to do a little bit of profit taking to look good on their books. So that might be another supportive factor. And also uh, as we move forward, if the Brazilian weather stays dry, uh, the second crop corn in Brazil uh, could be impacted by the same factors that are uh, currently hurting the soybean crop in Brazil. So several things that could lead to a, a little bit of a rally. I think farmers will be reluctant sellers on corn unless they get a rally. So several things I think could uh, give corn a little bit of a boost as we move into December. Yeah, absolutely. What about the wheat market? So you mentioned the funds being short in corn, maybe covering some of those positions into the end of the year. They're also really short in this wheat market. Will they do the same there? I think there's opportunity for some. Uh, it'd be nice to see some more exports like we see saw today. But moving forward, uh, I, I think funds do take opportunity to cash in some of their profits. And, and at these kind of levels in wheat, it uh, seems likely that we can get a little bit of a bounce. I just question how far it can really go without some renewed demand. Yeah. So China, and as you mentioned this morning, for about 4 million bushels of SRW wheat and we do need more export business, but how hard is it going to be to get that because Russia is still undercutting us in the market? I mean, it's the export pace has got to pick up quite a bit here, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's one of the biggest hurdles to overcome. As long as this war is going on, Russia continues to uh, fund their war by, you know, basically 
really low priced wheat in the world. And, and we have another Middle East conflict with uh, what's going on with Israel. So uh, countries around the world that normally buy wheat have been uh, flocking over to their cheap Russian wheat and they tend to, uh, you know, avoid the United States. So I think that's a pretty big hurdle to overcome. Uh, that doesn't look to change as we move into 24. So wheat's just got some things to overcome that are pretty tough to do right now. Yeah. So the cattle market has been on both sides of study here today. Um, it looks like we're holding the November 10th lows at least. Do you think that we're trying to carve out a bottom here? After a pretty significant break, and, and when you look at the, the low kill this week with the holiday, uh, traditionally, you know, turkeys, uh, the, the thing right now. So as we move into next week, I think the demand for the Christmas holiday and the New Year's holiday coming up is going to be positive for beef and as well as pork. So I feel the market um, kind of bounced out of a low today. And going forward, I think we're going to get back to a better kill. And I think better demand will show up as we move into the first part of December. You So you think that's true for both cattle and hogs? Yeah, I think so. I mean, traditionally, you know, a lot of ham is is a holiday meal at uh, Christmas and New Year's. So I think there's a renewed demand coming uh, that should show up in the first few weeks of, uh, of December. And I, I think that's your positive that hopefully will show up and show that demand. And, and that's what can around this market, I feel, as we move into the first couple of weeks. All right. We really have to have the demand, though, in the hogs. And I know we saw news yesterday that China is going to maybe keep liquidating their sow herd until they get down to a certain level. You know, is that something that is going to be a headwind for this market, hog market, do you think, Chuck? Yeah, currently, you know, we're, we're struggling with uh, more than adequate supply. You also have to worry about the consumers with inflation, where they're going to spend their money. So uh, that's a, a multitude of things that are on the negative side. So far, the consumers, uh, I think, during the holiday season will spend the money. But as we move into 24, that's a concern for this uh, hog market to overcome uh, a lot of uh, supply against uh, questionable demand at times. Okay. Thanks for joining us. As always, Chuck Shelby Risk Management Commodities. That is Markets Now.